It was a cold Saturday afternoon as qualifying proceeded with the spring system in warm-ups with outside temperatures of just 40 to 50 degrees. Some of the cars had a little trouble getting hooked up. Tires were not coming up to temperature as there's two times since the winner, Richie Evans, the overwhelming favorite to take the seventh annual spring sizzler during warm-ups in his jeans machine, fit off with big block power and departure for Evans, who's used to running the small block engine at the half mile and quarter mile racetracks around the Northeast where he was winning as modified driver a year ago. Jerry Pearl uncorks an engine, making it a short weekend for the SNS race cars team. As the cars try to get dialed in, as a qualified during time trial Saturday afternoon with the 10 fastest cars automatically going into the spring sister field. W.J. Grez of Aguilar Mass having a tough time of it in the new Kent Brothers Mustang. Over 100 cars filled the Stafford pits as there's Buck Stevens, the winningest driver in Stafford asphalt history. Fourth powered car in the field. Fred DeSero, winner of the first Brink Sizzler. Shongi Chartrand in the heavy coal. Now with Chevrolet power, but without the handling to break into the field for the Spring Sizzler. Having a bit of a tough time of it this weekend in car number 69. Here's Stevens, the Sonny Cazella wood chopper widow, the only forward powered entry in the field. It carried him to eight feature wins at Stafford last season. He's won over 50 of them since the track was paved in 1967. Stevens, the 1974 Sizzler winner, driving a Vega powered automobile, ranks among the top four favorites that also include Jeff Bodine and Mater Troyer. Stevens' time trials at 20.60 seconds, fastest time of the day thus far. Oops, Jim Tyler finds his way into the third turn wall in his Capri off the Long Island circuit. They get the damage repaired and qualify later in the day. Mark Lachidus of North by without incident. Here is Evans, whom the press tab is overwhelming favorite. In the press poll, he pulled 33% of the vote to win his second spring sister. Evans' time draws at 20.62 seconds, a tab behind Bud Stevens. Later, Troyer in his brand new pit the car just completed Friday night. Troyer goes out and sets fast time at 20.11 seconds. Then Jeff Bodine takes to the track in his new small block pit damaged to Trent, the car has a whole new front end on it. As Bodine goes out of the half mile, banged over the time trial for the Sizzler. Out of turn number four and across the stripe, Bodine defending Winston Racing Champion in every Friday night competition at Stafford sets the pole at 20.03 seconds. The rest of the field goes into the heat races to qualify. In the first heat, George Summers beat S.J. Avancin and Stan Greger as the cars pile up in turn three of heat number three. There's Ray Miller up against the wall. A couple of other cars also pile again. Ron Bouchard, Wayne Anderson, and Herb Simpson qualified in the second heat. Here again in heat three, John Rosati puts the Lloyd Severance Pido into the wall on the home straight. Rosati was uninjured, but the car was badly shaken. Here's the remains of the Ray Miller machine. Wrecked in Saturday qualifying, they'll have it back together for Sunday. Jerry Cook wins this third qualifying heat over Ed Flemke, former Cessna winner, and Georgie Brunholzel from Long Island. Thank goodness for fuel cells. Action now at qualifying heat number four. There's Don Howe, Gary Winters, and Bob Santos dueling it out on the back stretch into turn number three. has the inside as Santos challenges in the high group. Jerry Bartlett runs in the fourth spot. It's Bob Santos working his way on the outside around Gary Winters. As they lap by traffic, Santos is boxed out of second spot. Winters squeezes through. Santos wins it. Winters is second and Howe is third. Here in qualifying heat number five, Brian Ross puts the move on Freddie Schultz as Schultz locks it up going into turn number one. Schultz battles back on the inside, but Ross hangs on to win the fifth heat over Dave Monaco and Bill Kane. With this heat completed, only five positions remain in spring sister qualifying as the remainder of the field will go to the consolation races.
Racing interrupted briefly by a 10-minute snowstorm, prompting promoter Ed Yarrington to rename the event the Frostbite Falls 400 instead of the Spring Sizzler 80. While 3,000 Saturday afternoon fans sat in the snow and laughed at the weather and themselves were sitting there, action got back underway. No start. Uh, this qualifying consolation round, Dick Dunn won the first consolation event over Bob Potter. As we pick up the action in Concy number two, there's W.J. Graz spinning the Duquette Brothers Mustang at the start finish line. It was a cold bunch that watched these few consolation races at the end of Saturday afternoon. As Mark Lachedes calls it a day, and they pile them up once again at turns three and four. The cold temperatures not allowing tires to get hooked up as the cars take the green. Wilson against the wall, done for the afternoon. This time they stack up in the first turn. Here's the battle for the lead in the second consolation race. Alan Whipple, he is the early leader. Here's Bob Stefanik on the inside, the big block power. Red Barn Speed Monza now on the outside of Whipple. Tremendous battle with Moose Hewitt, defending Waterford Speedball champion, running one, two, and three. But only the fastest two cars can qualify. Stefanik now dropped to third behind Moose Hewitt and Alan Whipple, the leader, with only two qualifying spots available. Five. Stefanik now dropped to third behind Moose Hewitt and Alan Whipple, the leader with only two qualifying spots available. Alan Whipple, New Hampshire hot shoe from the Manadnock Claremont circuit. Here comes Stefanik on the outside of Moose Hewitt. Three-time Riverside champ Bob Stefanik streaks across the line. Half a car length ahead of Moose Hewitt. Whipple wins it, Stefanik is second. In the third consolation, Lou Tabone and John Bergeny Slam into the pit gate in turn number one. Both cars heavily damaged. The Bergeny car is totaled. Both drivers walk away uninjured. But a break in the track electrical system ends qualifying. The cars came from all over. Some went home to work in their garage Saturday night and Sunday morning. Others who traveled long distance like the Frank Conway crew decided they'd take over the motel parking lot. Here driver Gary Winters supervises the rebuilding operation of car number X9. Now here comes car owner Frank Conway, who's apparently just woken up, wondering what all the commotion is out in the parking lot. Sunday morning qualifying for the Constellation Heats, and Guy Chartrand continues to have his problems on the Stafford Half Mile. The 50 lap non-qualifiers feature coming up. Here's the third consolation race, rerun from yesterday afternoon, and Jim Tyler leads Charlie Jerzombek. Jerzombek spun out in time trials, had some tough luck in his qualifying heat. There's only one qualifying position available in this consolation race. Tyler has it, and Jerzombek wants it on the outside. Tyler shuts him off into turn number one. Jerzombek looks to the inside, but bobbles in turn two, and Tyler hangs on. Charlie J fights it back in the outside room and nips Tyler at the line. Tyler holds on, carries him high up into two, but Jerzombek has the engine down the back stretch and has the handling into turn number three to take the final qualifying position in the third consolation race. Uh-oh, guess who again? Tyler loses it in spectacular style on the restart and misses his chance of getting into the spring sizzler. He won't go home empty-handed, though. There's still a chance to qualify the 50 lap, not qualifiers feature, but Jim Tyler is not thrilled about missing out on the spring sizzler. What's this, a late entry that on qualifiers race? Checkered flag announcers Paul Tremaine. Jeff Flurry. Dirt track ace from Lebanon Valley. A little trouble with the Stafford Oval. We're in the 50 lap non-qualifiers feature with Gomer Taylor and Dick Castle.
with Billy Knight battling it out behind the leaders. John Rosati is the pole sitter, and he has a handy lead in the Cohen Hoffman Advanced Mustang. Tommy Sylvester rides second over Sonny O'Sullivan, Moose Hewitt, Bob Park, Doug Rudolph, Dick Casso, and Billy Knight. Sylvester riding in the second spot. Trouble in turn number two. Precipitated by 69, Guichard Tram. Sonny O'Sullivan is around and into the wall. Dick Casso, two other cars have piled into the accident and are done for the afternoon. Miller, who's had a tough weekend in this spring system, bounces it off the wall on the back stretch. And the no-style racing team effort is also finished for the day. Here's Jim Tyler again. He's come back to qualify for the 50-lap feature and now battles it out with Bruce Hewitt. Tyler gets a little loose and Hewitt goes by to pick off the position. John Rosati is your leader. He's led from the green flag. Hewitt now in second. Jim Tyler in the Capri riding in third. Fourth spot, Jerry Bartman up for Freeport, Long Island. Rosati, who time trial this car, fifth fastest for the spring scissor, got out of it to drive car number 28 and forfeited his position in the starting field in the 73. He came back to take the white flag and the checker as the winner of the non-qualifiers feature. He $1,000 and a first shifter as the car goes onto the scale to be weighed. Rosati, former Rookie of the Year at Stafford, three years ago. Off to a good start for the season for Carter Tuck Hoffman. Spring says their originators, Lou Boyd and Bruce Cohen, established an annual award, the Arut Award, honoring Jack Arut, Speedway owner's contributions to modified auto racing. The press annually votes on the recipient of the award. <laughs> and the stage is set for the greatest race in the history of spring. Leo Cleary, 10th fastest time trialer, is the pole sitter with Jimi Hendrix at outside. Fred Desero and Ken Bouchard to the second row, Don Whalen and George Kennedy row three, Richie Evans and Bug Stevens in the fourth row, Maynard Troyer and Jeff Bodine complete the top ten. The green is on and Cleary leads the charge into turn number one. Hendrickson is outside with Desero moving up from the inside row out of turn number two. Cleary hangs on as Desero continues to work the low groove. Kenny Bouchard rides fourth over George Kent. Into turn three, DeSera tries for second. There's trouble in the first turn. George Kent got a bit out of shape, tapped Ron Bouchard and five cars. Ended up in a jam session in turn one. Brian Ross goes to the pits with steering damage as to Dave Monaco. George Summers' car is parked and apparently out for the day. on Hendrickson. Bodine has moved up to third. DeSero is fourth. Stevens fifth. And Maynard Troyer rides in the sixth spot. The Lion, Leo Cleary, leading through these first five laps of competition as the field stays very tightly bunched. Trouble in the first turn again. Ed Bunke's throttle sticks wide open and the man sand gravel pit goes into the wall. On the restart, Ken Bouchard has the lead. Bodine works the outside ahead of Cleary, Stevens, DeSero, Hendrickson, and Maynard Troyer. Bodine finds his way by Bouchard, with Buck Stevens moving into second. Kenny rides third, with Hendrickson and DeSero moving up on the inside. Bodine the leader. Buck Stevens, Kenny Bouchard, and now Troyer has moved up to fourth position and challenging Bouchard for third. Troyer cuts the margin into turn number one down to five car lengths. We're about 20 laps into the race.
Bodine leading in Troyer, steadily gaining ground. Jeff Bodine's Pido has a small block Chevrolet, Jack Tan engine. Later Troyer with the big block, a car that was just completed two nights ago. Looking for his second consecutive spring sizzler win. Only Richie Evans has won the event twice. Back-to-back -back wins in 75 and 76. Troyer trying to duplicate that beat this afternoon. Ron Bouchard out of the race and crash on lap number two. Gets pushed behind the pit wall. Here's Troyer on the inside as Bodine went into turn one a little too high. Bodine winds the small block up and holds on Troyer. Establishes a lead. Here's Richie Evans, two times as the winner, riding in the third position. Kenny Bouchard is currently in the fourth slot. Troyer has about a half a waist, half a straightaways advantage on Bodine. As he continues to rocket by slower cars. By the end of the event, only the top five cars will be on the same lap. The scoreboard says it all. Maynard Troyer wins for almost $4,000 in the Spring Sizzler. Jeff Bodine is second. Richie Evans third. Buck Stevens fourth. Fred Desero fifth. Wayne Anderson, Leo Cleary are sixth and seventh. Bob Stefanik started 29th and ran to eighth. Charlie Trezombek was ninth. And Ken Bouchard tenth. On his way to the press box, Maynard Troyer, winner of the seventh annual Spring Sizzler.
Roger. 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 Come on up. We're in the election commission, will ya? You're gonna have a hard time throwing him off the racetrack. 